Hey guys, this is Mad Pistol, and uh, I'm here to show you the culmination of my work so far, which is this programmable keypad. Now, what is the difference between a programmable keypad and a fixed function keypad? Well, a fixed function keypad means that in order to get the code to be correct, you have to wire that code in order to in order to work. Uh, a programmable key uh, keypad and a key code door lock basically means that you can actually set the number on the fly uh, as to what you want it to be. Uh, and while in theory that sounds like, oh, it's not that hard, well, it's a lot harder than it sounds. So it requires a lot more uh, wire work. But before we go any further, let's just go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and give a demonstration. So we have to wait roughly two seconds in between each key press uh, in order to get this to work correctly uh, due to the complication. So let's go with the, uh, a key code. It's just going to be random. 5, 2, 3, 8. Let's just go with that. So it's going to hit 5. Wait two seconds. 2, 3, and 8. 5, 2, 3, 8 does not open the door. Okay, well, let's go fix this. Let's go make it so it does open the door. Over here, we have our number banks. So, first number is a 5. This is actually from another one. So, we're going to turn 5 on. Very good. Right over here. We're going to turn on a 2. There we go. And then 3. Right there. And then an 8. I think that was right. 5, 2, 3, 8. There we go. 8 is now on. So, 8 and then two, five, yep, five, two, three, eight. Okay, so we're programmed over here. Which means that technically if we put in five, two, three, eight, it should open the door. So let's see what happens. So we're going to hit five, two, three, and the last number is an eight. Bingo. As you see, it works. All we have to do now is hit the reset button. Uh, just like the other devices I've created, it has a lockout switch, which basically means that once the code is pushed in, all the buttons are deactivated. The only thing that resets it is the reset button. And that's basically how that works. So, how does a device like this work? Well, lots of wiring and lots of pistons. That's how it works. So we have different sections. Uh, you've already seen the number banks. The number banks are divided up into 10 numbers each. Uh, and this right here is the activation control, which controls uh, if the circuits are activated or not. Uh, each time a, uh, a bank is activated, each time you get one number correct, it moves to the next bank. So on, as you can see, this bank right now is deactivated. Same with bank number three and bank number four. So as of right now, it's only getting uh, the number from bank number one that I've already preset, which was the five? Yeah, five. So five is the number. So let's go over here and see what number it has. And we look down here, there it is, 5. Now, what if I change that number to a, I don't know, a 9? So 9 is up here. So if I change that number to a 9, I want you to watch this. So I'm going to come over here. This is still bank 1, so it's still on the first number. So we're going to turn off 5. I'm going to turn on 9. We're going to go over here, and look at that. 9 is activated. So now 9 is the first number. We can do that with pretty much any one of them. So if I go over here and say hit 9, should automatically go to a 2. There we go. 9 is the first number. So it should automatically go to a 2. And indeed it did. There's the 2. 2 is now activated. So now 2 comes down here into the section. So what is this section right here? Well, this is our, uh, this is our check sequence. Every single one... Ev Every time you get a number correct, it, it comes down here. And I've got it elaborately set up so that each time you get a number right, uh, a circuit is activated, and then the next, uh, the next circuit is, uh, is ready. So basically, uh, you've got power to one circuit, and then uh, basically, in this case, bank number one is, uh, is correct. So therefore, we're moving on to the, the system for bank number two. So bank number two now has to be activated. As you can see, we've now rerouted the circuit. As the circuit um, has hit this has hit uh, this piston right here, which activated uh, the answer for bank number one, and then we've rerouted the circuit to turn on for bank two. So now bank two is activated. When that uh, when that is correct, uh, it will do the same thing for three, and it'll do the same thing for four. So now there's another sequence though that goes along with that. Each time you get one, uh, first time you get one. 
it's going to act, it's going to activate the answer to bank number one, and then it's going to activate the circuit to bank two. But there's also another wire which comes over here. Now, while you can't see it, this uh, piston was actually in place, and what this did is it the the circuit ran through here, uh, turned turned itself off immediately, and then it activated the next one. But it also did one more thing. Oh, I'm over here. Whoop, ignore that. It's a future modification. Uh, here. There we are. So this. Now, this goes up, and this goes up. And I bet you're wondering, well, what the hell does this do? And this one right here is actually bank number one. So as you can see, it's wired to pistons, which actually turn bank number one off. It's also wired over here to bank number two, which actually turns bank number two on. So each time you have a sequence that is correct, it immediately turns off the bank that was correct and turns on the next bank so that you're ready for the next number. And as you can see down here, two is now being routed, and we've already seen that over at the piston. You get all four correct, and it runs the wire to the door. It turns on the door, and it also turns off, uh, it also turns uh, a uh, a sequence that cuts power to all the different uh, numbers. All right, so now we know how it get how it is uh, goes correct. So let's do a live demonstration of this. We've already done nine. Next number is two, so we're going to hit two. There we go. So two. Yeah, okay, you just saw it kind of change right there. Uh, hopefully, you're watching this in uh, 720p. Sorry, it's not. I could have made 1080, but it uh it, it wastes way too much data when I do that. Two, so three is next going to be, or three is next. Can I speak in gibberish? There we go. All right. So three was correct. And then I think eight, no, eight, two, three. Yeah, eight's the final number. Eight is the final number. So we're going to go over here and hit eight, and the door should open. Where are you? And eight. There we go. Door now opens. Now let's go see what the final sequence looks like. Whoops. There we go. All right, let's go see what the final sequence is. So this is basically the, the the redstone torch that opens the door. So it follows through here, through here, through here. Okay, and then we go up here. This way, follow it, follow it, follow it, follow it, follow it, follow it. There we go. And there we are. This little inversion right here deactivates the door, or activates the door, and it opens. It's wired to both sides, and there you have it. Now there's another sequence also, uh, when you get it correct, uh, I branched out the, the final sequence right here. Uh, first one activates this, goes and turns off, the, the, um, turns off bank four, but it also does one more special thing, which is this, follow this wire, this way, this way, this way, this way, under here, and there you go. Now this wire, what does this do? As you can see, this is uh, one of the circuits that goes into uh, the number channels. So. What this does is this cuts all the lines to it, so now the numbers don't do anything. So the numbers aren't going to reset it. Um, so yeah, I've shown you how it works. So how is it that if it if you don't get it correct, how does it check that? Well, I've wired it so that each time you get a number correct, or as you can see, the correct number for this is 9. The rest of the numbers are off. Actually, what they do is they route the... the um, they route the incorrect numbers to a different sequence, which goes down here, follow this channel down, and into this. This right here is a reset sequence. This right, uh, this over here makes sure that all the uh, the numbers are in place, uh, and that's mainly because uh, the reset sequence also activates that. But it also um, comes over here. It basically turns on bank one and turns off bank two, three, and four. And in, in the process of doing that, it also turns off bank number, it also turns off all these right here at the same time. As you can see, they're routed to it. So basically, it is a full reset. So if you get a number wrong, it completely resets the switch. So let's say first number is 9. And I think the next number is 2. I think that's right. Let's go check 2. Yep, 2 is right. So we're going to hit 2 one more time. Now, the next number is 3. Let's say we don't press 3. Let's say we press 5, which is turned off. Now, if this is correct and it resets everything, we're going to be back to 9. So, let's hit 5 and see what happens. Ooh. 
and look at that, we're back to 9, and down here, the sequence is reset. That's pretty much it. Um, that's how this works. Uh, mainly used a kind of a modular design, and by modular I mean uh, we have different areas. At first I tried a uh, an all-inclusive design, which is right here, which turned out to be a headache because it means I had to wire every single number for every single outcome. And basically these two sections, this is only two banks, took eight hours came over here, create a modular design where you have uh, routing, a lot more uh, routing as opposed to uh, checks built in. And you actually have a checkboard. Um, and that took about five and a half hours. So big difference, uh, both in time and in all honesty, the complexity of this is, is far less than that one over there as well. Uh, although that one would have been more compact uh, as part of the design. But uh, in terms of the time saved, I'm not really fretting about that. So that's it. Programmable uh, keypad. This is Mad Pistol. Uh, have any questions? Please feel uh, please feel free to leave comments. Send me some PMs uh, if you need any explanations of any of the systems. And uh, that about wraps it up. And thanks for watching.